Schaub gets up and hammers it home. Who bounces it inside to Mooney, who jams it home. To a cutting Jogo for the two-handed jam. It's to Fluger for the two-handed jam. Swatted by Durham. Jams with two. Another rejection. Hello again, Irish fans, and welcome to the 19th season of Inside Notre Dame Basketball with Mike Bray. I'm Jack Nolan, joined as always by the head coach of the Fighting Irish. This season's underway. The youngest team you have ever coached at the collegiate level, including going back to your Delaware days. First eight games have been interesting. Very interesting, Jack, and I think it's safe to say we are thoroughly committed to the youth movement this year. Never have we been in that situation in my 19 years. But it's fun, and we're changing every day. Every game's been close, and you've picked up six wins in the eight contests. Yeah, I like where we're at, Jack. You know, we're disappointed in our two losses, but I think we are finding out a lot about our team, and I think it can only help us once we get to ACC play. One roster change since the season began. Elijah Burns decided he's going to graduate in December. Time for him to move on. We will miss Elijah Burns. He is a wonderful young man. He will get his degree. I think our youth movement kind of changed his role a little bit. The great thing is he'll get a Notre Dame degree. He's off to Siena. He will play for them in the second semester. When we come back, we'll take you back to November 6th and the beginning of this season for this young team against UIC. You began your season with the Notre Dame hosted Gotham Classic. It enabled you to start with seven straight home games and bring in some decent competition to test your young guys. You know, we wanted to stay at home with these young guys and get into a routine and see if we could play well on our floor. And you're right, we tested ourselves with four very good mid-major programs. And you started with UIC, you got off to a great lead. Young team, you had to be wondering about it. You jumped out to a 16-6 lead. You know, I loved how we got out of the gate and we did it defensively. We really guarded and, and then we were driving the ball and getting to the foul line a lot that night. You're wondering how the freshmen are gonna react in their first real game. Well, you had five guys score in double figures, including Three freshmen, leading scorer was Nate Leshesky, had a team high 12 points, nine rebounds. Robbie Carmody started, he had 11, Dane Goodwin had 10. You know, I am just excited about the young guys. You know, they're great to coach, they're tough, they're not afraid. They're gonna make some young mistakes, but we love working with them and I think we can only get better. Of course, you need your veterans to come through as well. John Mooney, who's gonna be a theme in this show, had 10, as did DJ Harvey, who's really ahead of schedule coming back from that knee injury. You know, both Johnny Mooney and DJ Harvey, even though they're returning players, they're very new to their roles. DJ coming off major surgery, Johnny Mooney in a new main guy role, they continue to blossom and we've got to be patient with them as well. So you win your opener over Illinois Chicago, 84-67. Two nights later, you jump out of the Gotham Classic for a night against Chicago State. You jump out to an 18 point lead, eight and a half minutes in, but Chicago State's a much better team this year and they came right back, actually cutting the deficit to two late in the half. You know, new coach, of course, Chris Zorich is their athletic director now. Good it was great Chris. to have him back in our building but well coached, older guys playing against my young guys. And so they make a run on us before the first half and we're kind of hanging on and digging. The zone bothered us, they played zone and we settled for jump shots. I thought in the second half, we attacked their zone and drove the ball a little bit better and we defended better. Getting into a rhythm offensively is gonna be a theme as well. And you expected that with a young team, but one thing that can make up for that, if guys will buy in to defense, you can make up for it quickly. And your young guys have bought into it. You really did in the second half against Chicago State. You held them to just seven points in the first 10 minutes, and you would go on to build a 32-point lead. I do like how we are engaged defensively here in those games we played at home. Um, we, we buy into it. Um, we want to defend. We help each other. We rotate. Uh, I think it's something we're going to have to hang our hat on as we're trying to figure out our offensive identity. So you won your second game over Chicago State, 89-62, and you had five days, including a mandatory day off, to get ready to return to the Gotham Classic and take on the defending Big South Tournament champion Radford Highlanders. They were good. They're really good. And they put it on us. They defended us. They were hard to guard. They were older than us and they played older than us and they really deserved to win. They had really good guard play. 
And it was disappointing, um, but you know, I think we kind of maybe learned a lesson that night playing against some older guys who play with a great tempo on both ends of the floor. And Radford played well enough. They could have won by double digits. They didn't because John Mooney stepped up with a career game, 24 points, 12 rebounds. John Mooney uh, really was the one thing that kept us in the game. He was fabulous for us. And again, Jack, uh, we talk about our freshmen a lot, but Johnny Mooney is new to his role too. So we've got to keep giving confidence to him. And sometimes fans forget, Sometimes the other team just wins. You'd made a run in the second half, but Radford comes out, makes 56% of their shots in the second half, nine threes, and yet they were still only up five with 55 seconds left, but you couldn't get over the hump. You know, a well-deserved win by a, a team that has won a championship and won an NSA tournament game in Radford, and I think a learning experience for us. So how would this young Irish team respond to their first loss of the season? We'll show you how they came back against William & Mary right after this timeout. Now, game three of the Gotham Classic brought William and Mary to Purcell Pavilion, and the Tribe made your guys work for the victory. They actually led by one at halftime. Great offensive group. They're running all the Princeton offense. You're guarding for 25 seconds of a shot clock. Exhausting. And I thought we responded really well in a tough game. You know, it was a hard game. We were trying to bounce back. Our confidence was a little, we're wondering a little bit after losing to Radford. I thought our ball pressure in the backcourt in the second half, especially T.J. Gibbs's, turned the tide for us. Well, you were still trailing by one with just over nine minutes left, but you went on a 16-2 run, and not surprising, that run included eight points from John Mooney. Johnny Mooney was fabulous. We were throwing it into the post on him. He made some good mid-range stuff. Again, I think he is developing into a weapon, not only outside the arc, that's not all he does. He's good around the basket, and I thought his post-up game saved us. That, that second half. And circling back to that defense for a bit, you forced 16 turnovers in the game. You had a 22 advantage in points off turnovers. Yeah, we really did guard. We had to guard to escape that day because, you know, again, we're still searching for our offense at that point in the season. And I thought our defense saved us against a very gifted offensive team. We guarded the three-point line, which is a big weapon for William & Mary. We took that away. So you beat William & Mary 73-64, and that leads you to the showcase game of the Gotham Classic against Duquesne the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. And again, talented team, you again got off to a great start. Are you surprised by the number of quick starts you've gotten off to with this young team? I, I have been, and I've been really happy about it, you know, especially at here in our building. We've gotten out of the gate well. You know, that game, they are really a pressure defensive team. It's hard to make passes. I thought our driving early in the game, especially TJ Gibbs, four assists early in the game to get into the lane and find people. I bet if we went across the country, this tournament had the best collection of mid-majors of any preseason tournament. Duquesne clawed back, and again, they had a one-point lead with seven minutes left. No, they're right back in it. Um, their pressure takes its toll. We did a good job of changing defenses, played some zone, which helped us. But at the end of the day, it was our defense down the stretch with nine straight stops to end the game that saved our backsides and got us a win. Those nine straight stops right here in my notes, and that triggered a 13-0 run. Yeah, it was again our defense, and, and again, we've been able to rely on that, and I think that's something we can build on, Jack, or especially early in the season as we're trying to figure ourselves out offensively. And again, John Mooney, 16 points, 10 rebounds, his third consecutive double-double. Guy just keeps getting better and better and more confident, and he's deserving, Jack. Here's a guy for two years who kind of was part of our culture, but not getting a big bite of the apple as far as playing time. Now as a junior, the old junior light bulb going on, we've had many young men in that, in that role, and here he is playing well and getting confident, and it's exciting to see. So you win the showcase game of the Gotham Classic 67-56. Let's take you inside the locker room after the game. Big time defense, big time moving, and a lot of different guys making plays. That was nine straight stops. We got really good stuff, and we're nowhere near what we're going to be, right? right. That's yes, what's sir. amazing. Yes, we're nowhere near where we're going to be. 
A Saturday after Thanksgiving, you host DePaul, the second game of a home-and-home -home series with a historic rivalry that I know you have great respect for. A lot of respect. When I got the job 19 years ago, everybody said, when are we playing DePaul? When are we playing UCLA? <laughs> We've got them both on the yes. schedule this year. Of course, we opened up DePaul's building last year. Now they're coming back. And I was very worried about this game because of how old DePaul is. They have all 21 and 22 year old men and I was very impressed with how we played. We certainly shot the ball well that day. Seesaw game the first 10 minutes. You actually trailed by five when you went on a 9-0 run that gave you the lead for good. A run highlighted by a spectacular dunk by Prentice Hub. Prentice Hub getting down the middle of the floor and as a young guard and a young starting point guard for us, he just continues to get better and confident, uh, but he has really helped us. His addition to the lineup helps our ball handling, he helps our defense. You made that move after the Radford game and it was visibly noticeable. It, it, it takes some pressure off of uh, Rex Fluger and TJ Gibbs to have that ball handler on the floor to start the game. And you talk about Gibbs and Fluger. Gibbs tied a season high in this game with 18. Fluger had a ridiculous day. 20 points, six of seven shooting, four for four from three. I was excited for him. You know, Rex is, you know, not always going to be that offensive guy for us, but he does so many little things, and you know, he's done that and won games for us throughout his career. You know, he was due to have a good shooting night, and he certainly did. So the Irish beat the Blue Demons 95-70, and as you might expect, the head coach, well, he was pretty happy after the game. <laughs> This rivalry dates back over a century. And the 106th meeting between DePaul and Notre Dame is underway. Gibbs works his way in, finds Leshevsky. This is a cleaner look, and he makes it count. Well, we broke into a new level today, didn't we? Yes. Hub gets oh up and hammers my. it home. Oh my goodness. What a way to start the second half, guarding them and cutting them up offensively. Fluger steps his way in. Good Great. head fake by the senior ex Fluger. We've been waiting for that offensive explosion, baby. Jawan Durham goes up for the tip jam. So after the big one over DePaul, you only have a couple of practice days to get ready for the ACC Big Ten Challenge game against Illinois. And you're getting ready for a pressure defense. We remember this system because this was the Stephen F. Austin system in oh, the yeah. NCAA tournament, and they just come after you. The other thing is we take a lot of pride in representing the league during the ACC Big Ten Challenge. We were 3-2 and two going into the challenge. I'm happy that we're 4-2 and two in our six games. Really hard fought first half as you expected. The Illini lead by one at halftime, but you're guys really cranked it up on both ends of the floor in the second half. Well, they're coming at you physically. You know you're going to get fouled. You just got to be strong with the ball. It's hard to make passes against them. And I like that we were just tough enough and strong enough with the ball to get to the lane and then to get to the foul line enough. We didn't, we didn't shoot it great from the foul line, but getting there that much took its toll on Illinois. And the guy who triggered the run that gave you control of the game was none other than Jawan Durham in the second half. Scored a then career high 10 points, blocked five shots, altered a bunch more, grabbed three rebounds. He changed the game. Totally exciting half to watch this young man. Johnny Mooney in foul trouble. We put him in there and he changes the whole complexion of the game on both ends of the floor. Certainly blocking shots, but he's scoring around the bucket. And I just think it was a night we will remember as his coming out party. As your leader, TJ Gibbs, wants it so bad, was pressing so much earlier. You talked about how Hub taking some pressure off him. Gibbs had 19, including seven in that key run. Yeah, TJ, I thought, was starting to find his rhythm in that game, especially in the second half. He was driving the ball hard. We really kind of opened the floor for him to drive it in the second half, and he delivered. Best game of the year for DJ Harvey. Best game, actually, for his career. Career high 19 points, and he only took eight shots. And he was deserving, because I thought he was tied up in knots a little bit early in the season, still finding his rhythm off this knee injury. But for him to get into a rhythm, and man, did he make big shots in with game pressure on him uh, to help us get a little bit of a lead. You had enough of a cushion, you hold on to win, 76-74. That concludes the homestand. So you decided to make it easy on your young team. First road game for these young guys, low-key affair, Oklahoma, Jimmy V Classic, Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena. I don't know about the coach's philosophy <laughs> scheduling-wise there, Jack, to take a young group to the garden with all the lights. And even though we didn't get over the hump and we lost to a hot-shooting older Oklahoma team, 
I was really proud of how our group competed and gave ourselves a chance to win and how our young guys, and I include a John Mooney in a new role and, uh, you know, a DJ Harvey in the second half, how they played uh, in, in that setting. I, I think it's something to build on for us here early in the year. And certainly good hustle right from the beginning. Now, you miss your first nine shots, five of them on one possession with great hustle. You fell behind by seven early, but there was never that, oh, this is too much for us. You know, we talked about, and I called two timeouts in the first half because we took two big punches from a hot shooting team. And I really told our guys, I love how we've taken punches. We've taken punches here. Let's just hang in there. Let's see if we can get into a defensive rhythm. We got into a little better offensive rhythm to at least score some. And then certainly in the second half, you know, I thought we were really good offensively. It was just hard to guard them the way they shot it that night. Oklahoma lost their starting center in the game. So they played <laughs> small. And I joked on the radio, you guys came in thinking you were going to take a French test. And they told yeah. you last minute it was a German test. Oklahoma went from a team that pounded it inside and got most of the points in the paint to a team that shot from the perimeter and made a season high 15 threes. All of our reps in practice were protecting the paint, guarding yeah. posts, guarding guards in the post, and all of a sudden the big fella's out and they spread you out and they're firing. And really, when you absorb 15 threes, you usually lose by double digits. So it kind of tells you that our offense did get in a rhythm to keep us in the thing and have a chance, cut it to one possession. We missed a couple free throws and couldn't get over the hump. But, uh, you know, again, Oklahoma, Oklahoma played older than us for 40 minutes and deserved to win. Coach, as we take our final break of the show, what do you say we take a look at this week's Notre Dame Ticket Exchange, powered by Vivid Seats Player of the Week. It's actually a little montage of the Jawan Durham block shots that changed the Illinois game. Felice around the screen from Nichols, drives in there, blocked by Durham! Georgie B's in there trying to get the rebound. He shot blocked by Durham! It is Jawan Durham allowing Driving around a screen from Georgie B. Gets it hoop. Block by Durham into the hands of Harvey. To Dosumu. Block <laughs> by Durham again. And Durham has taken the garbage out. It's time now for the Tyrac.com question of the week for Coach Bray. This week's question comes from Ray Feldman of Annapolis, Maryland. Coach, what did you learn from the loss to Oklahoma that will help once you get to the ACC portion of your schedule? Well, I, I learned that we have some low post threats developing in Johnny Mooney and Jawan Durham. We weren't quite sure of that a month ago, but when we can throw it into the post historically here in this program, it's helped us. You know it's kind of a transition year because you're so young. So I guess you decided, let's just throw them to the fire. First road game at Madison Square Garden, second road game at Poly <laughs> Pavilion, third road game down in the Crossroads Classic against Purdue. Unbelievable challenge yeah. for us. You gotta play somebody and you gotta yeah. play good people. And we certainly are on a stretch and <clears throat> this stretch really kind of started with DePaul, you know, Big East. Big Ten in Illinois, and we got the first two. We'd like to pick off one or two more here, but playing at Pauley Pavilion will be an honor and a great experience for our guys, but we're playing against a very gifted uh, group in UCLA with NBA talent. They certainly are. Coach, here we go. Here we go. It's already been a great ride. Much more to come on this season. We'll be back in a few weeks with all the highlights of the UCLA, Purdue, and Jacksonville games. Until then, for Coach Bray, I'm Jack Nolan. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, go Irish. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame partners, Coca-Cola, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is also brought to you by Vivid Seats, Canon, Xfinity, Nissan, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, and SiriusXM.